Okay, I am going to show how to take a fiberglass tub enclosure out of the bathroom to get it out of here to make way for a new tub that I'm going to be putting in. Um, I don't do too many how-to videos, but apparently there is a big uh, market for it. So for that purpose, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to get started on what's going on here. I've already done a little bit of the prep. I'm taking out this sheetrock. What you have typically on these corners here, if you have a corner, is what's called corner B. So the corner bead was taken out. Usually it's nailed and screwed in. In this case, it wasn't nailed or screwed in. So it was relatively easy to take out. When you take it out, obviously you're gonna damage the other wall, the other side of the wall a little bit. That's not a big deal. So what you'll end up seeing here is the edge of the fiberglass. And it's always gonna be about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half out. So when you do your cut, you wanna cut along all the way around the perimeter of these things, about an inch and a half or so. And what I usually do is mark a line. This is actually just about an inch, but I'm gonna cut about a half an inch above that line. Uh, what you'll end up doing by doing that is exposing uh, the edge of this enclosure because if you see the sheetrock will overlap that, and there's usually a bit of caulking or something along the bottom here. So the easiest thing to do is take a razor knife and cut along the bottom to kind of release you know, any caulking that's in there. Um, and then you come in, as I do with a straight line, as straight as possible, um, come all the way around. As I'm done here, you can see the edge of the tub is right here. So it's about an inch and a half up. And there are nails that are actually inside the two by four. So they do two things. They hold the sheetrock in. When they're installing the sheetrock, they also hold the tub lip inside of the stud. So I've pretty much taken off almost all the nails along the top here. Um, easiest way, you're not gonna ever get a hammer in here to take these nails out. So the easiest way that I know is to grab a hold of it with some channel locks and then just bend it like that until it comes right out. There you go. So you don't, you, there's quite a bit of them, depends on who puts them in. Sometimes they're screws, which are fairly easy to take out. Sometimes they're nails. In this case, they're nails. So you're going to come along all of them. So what this does is basically just release the lip from the wood that's behind it. And in this case, they actually put glue. I don't mean glue literally, but I mean um, construction adhesive. They put a bead of construction adhesive before they put the sheetrock on, then they nailed it in. So sometimes, you know, getting this sheetrock out in this little trough here is very difficult because of the, because of the construction adhesive that they put in here. But it does come out, you just gotta struggle with it. You see where I've taken out all of mine doesn't come up in strips of any sort. So you just get something in there that's about that size and you keep on knocking it out until you have it done. And so I have basically all my sides done except for that back side. And I will show how I do it. A razor knife, a razor knife, any type of razor knife is probably the best. Make sure you have a sharp blade. And so you run the blade, like I said, probably about an inch and a half. I didn't measure this correctly, but about an inch and a half or so, and you just run that blade along there, and you want to dig into the sheetrock. So you're actually going to make probably about four or five passes until you get this blade in really deep. Um, that's one way to do it. Other way to do it is use a sawzall. So what I have here for my sawzall, it's electric, it doesn't matter if you got a battery operated one. Um, the blade that I'm using is a short blade. I think it's a six inch blade. Some of the other blades that you could use is this, but this is overkill. This is like a 14 inch blade. So the smaller the blade, the better. This is a metal cutting blade, and that's preferable because you're just going through sheetrock, so it's uh, like a hot knife through butter. The problem is you don't know what's behind the wall. So my suggestion is to use a razor knife or some other way to cut into that sheetrock. I do um, the saws off because I'm comfortable doing this. This is a slab, this is a concrete slab, which means all of your plumbing is inside the ground. I'm pretty confident because I've done this enough. I'm pretty confident that all my plumbing runs straight up through the ground as opposed to back behind here. 
but you never really know how they build a house. So if you start cutting into that um, right behind the wood there with the sawzall blade and that actually hit a pipe, that would not be a good thing. So I suggest two things. One, make sure your water is off before you attempt this, um, especially around this part area over here because you don't know if the plumbing comes through the ceiling or not. Uh, so that's one and the other is don't use a sawzall. If, you, if you're comfortable doing that, if you have the water off, then go ahead. But otherwise, just use a razor knife um, or some other type of cutting utensil. Um, anyway, I'm going to show how I do this with the sawzall. Okay, so once you have um, the tub enclosure free and clear of the inch and a half of sheetrock, then you're ready to take off the fixtures. So, the shower head usually comes up pretty easy. I already pre loosened this ahead of time. Lefty Lucy. Piece of cake. Shower fixture, they all vary. This is pretty standard for a three-handle fixture. There are screws that hold in the handles. Loosen the screws, handle comes right out. Uh, screwdriver. Find the screwdriver. What did I do with it? Or discussions. I don't like saying discussions. I just call them discussion. Same thing, lefty loosey, and they come right out. Most of them you'll find out will be hand tight, so it doesn't require biting down on this pliers or anything like that. You just loosen them up and they come right off. This is part of what actually holds the fixture to this fiberglass enclosure just by the mere fact that your fixture is tightened down with that. The tub spout normally screws in um, and screws out. So again, lefty loosey, righty tightsy, right? That's usually how they're put in because they have um, a female inside here and then usually have copper pipe that comes up to about here with the male threaded part 
and it just gets screwed in the male to the female. In this particular case, we have a little of anom an anomaly in which you'll see this little set screw, and it's usually um, one of these Allen wrench type set screws that actually hold it in. So rather than having a pipe go all the way through, um, you'll see, I'm going to take out this screw, again, lefty loosey, but that loosens it, and then you're able to take it out. So it doesn't have a pipe that goes through, it just has a little stub here, a plastic stub with an O-ring. This sits right on top of the O-ring, makes it watertight, and then this is what sets it in there permanently. So you just take that out, pretty easy. Overflow cap, pretty standard. Almost all of these have two screws that hold in an overflow cap. And I've already pre-loosened pre both of them. That's all there is. You have a little drain plug here at the bottom. And that's all it is. So, you know, once that's gone, that part is loose. Then you have the drain itself. Now, what you'll find sometimes, unfortunately, is that over the years, <clears throat> for whatever reason, people have broken. There should be like a cross here with these with these bars actually holding it. There is a tool, plumber's tool. I use the end of this. There's also another one. I don't know what I did with it. Which I don't particularly like. <coughs> this is it right here. Um, I carry both of them actually because I never know which one I'll need. So if you try and use this one, you still have that little cross thing at the bottom here and you simply put it down there, it kind of seats in and then use channel locks to unscrew it. Um, you can use this end too if you have that cross thing. This will actually fit in there so it's, it's a multi-tool basically. Um, I did not use this because there's always a possibility if you don't have a firm grip right here that you could break off those last two and if you do that then you're in trouble. So I pre-loosened with this tool already, that end of it, and it does have the two slots left that I'm able to turn off or turn out from there. You're going to need a large set of channel locks to grip it. Trying to do this with one hand. Hold on a second. So the large set of channel locks will grip the top of it and then just loosen it up. Don't put a lot of pressure on it because, as I said, you only have those last two slots left. At some point, you'll be able to do it with your hand. See all the plumber's putty it used to be here, and right under the plumber's putty is their gasket, and the gasket fits up under the tub. Plumber's putty goes on top, and then this seals it off, tightens it down, pushes out the excess plumber's putty, and that's it. So at this point, your tub is free and clear. Um, basically. Mm, it's a little more difficult to show on a real tub than this one. The process of taking it out on a real tub, you don't have this lip right here, right? I mean, I'm sorry, you don't have this contiguous um, piece going up. So on a real tub, it would come out to about right here, right? And so you would be free and clear of this stuff. This stuff kind of gets in the way when you don't have that lip, but it really doesn't matter because we're going to cut all this up with a sawzall anyway. So I'm going to show that process as well. Um, but basically, all the anchoring mechanisms, I mean anchoring by virtue of you've already cut out all this excess sheetrock all around where the lip is at, and then you've loosened up everything here that you need to. So the tub is basically free and clear. Sometimes there might be some tile that's up against the tub here, but in this case it doesn't really matter if it was a real tub. Um, it would matter because you have to pull it out in one piece unless it was a cast iron then you just bust it up 
Um, but anyway, so you are free and clear to take the tub out. The reverse process is exactly what you just saw. So when I put in the new tub, I'm doing the exact same thing. When I take this out, I'm going to put in the new tub, like, you know, at an angle. It'll fit right in. I will pre-measure to make sure my drain fits and everything. And once that's done, my pipe, which I'm going to show you a little bit later, my pipe, which actually runs down into here and then drains downward, will fit exactly where it's supposed to be for the new tub. Um, I will reverse the whole process. I will put plumber's putty, I will put the gasket up under here, put plumber's putty on the top. I will come in with my uh, cap and turn it down. That will lock that in. And then I will have my overflow cap right there. And that's basically anchoring the new tub. So it's just literally the reverse process of what you saw to put in the new one. Relatively easy. It just takes a few times to get used to it.
Okay, this is one of the reasons I don't, don't do how-to videos is because my video, my self-video technique is not too good. Um, I can't get the camera in the angles that I want it by myself. But basically what you have is um, I cut along the bottom here as if it were a tub and then I cut in half so that I was able to get this one corner piece out in one fell swoop and then the other half of the bathtub part I got it out the door also. Um, once I'm able to do that, I don't have to cut into this wall because I can just simply pull it right out. So now there's separation to where the actual fixture and all the stuff is that you don't want to cut into. At this point, if I can't get it out the door over here, which I probably can't, then I'll just go ahead and cut a line here and take it out in two pieces. How you get it out really doesn't matter. You can see it disintegrates pretty easy when you start bending the flaps and stuff. So a lot of cuts aren't necessary. You can literally bend it, snap it, and take out pieces at a time. Um, I prefer the larger pieces just to get it done and over with, but wear gloves because this fiberglass will mess up your hands and it will cut you. I also wear a mask, not the little paper mask, but one of these when I'm doing the cutting because I don't want the fiberglass getting into my lungs. And of course safety glasses. Um, but that's basically how to take out a fiberglass tub. And again, my apologies for not getting good video on this. I tried the best I could. Um, perhaps one day I'll have just the tub part that I can actually get a better video of instead of this whole thing. But um, it's a fairly simple process as I said. Um, as a homeowner, you should be able to do it, but as I said, when you're cutting, make sure you don't know what's behind here. So you have wires back here, for example. Um, the plumbing usually on a slab runs up through the floor, which I already kind of knew, so I wasn't too concerned about cutting into the wall. But if you're not comfortable with that, then definitely turn off the water and use a razor knife instead of a sawzall, the way I do. So that's basically how it works out. Um, the process of actually putting the new tub in is relatively quick. Once the new tub is in, then I'll be able to put up sheetrock around the walls and start tiling. So that's it.